Yes, hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is the Clarets Daily News here on Turfcast. And I just want to quickly say something before we get into it, because there's been a few negative comments, mainly on Facebook, a few on Twitter. Everyone who watches it on YouTube tends to be tip-top dead sound. I don't know why I just said tip-top. That's the cringiest thing I've ever done in my life. Anyway, um, a lot of people sort of like saying, oh, what a load of rubbish. Why do you keep spouting this rubbish on there? I'm not saying anything that isn't already out there. This show is just because I know a lot of people who watch this show and who watch us on YouTube don't have the time to go through tweets, to go through news. So they miss a lot of it. Like the amount of times that one of my mates or a member of the family will text me saying, oh, have you heard about this? I'm like, oh, I saw that two days ago. And that's where I got the idea from this because I have to go on Twitter to try and promote Turfcast, right? And even for my jobs, I have to be on a PC, so I just I just go on Twitter while I'm there and I'm constantly updating stuff and constantly seeing stuff. So all I am doing with this show is telling you via video what is already out there. So Fabrizio's tweeted it, Sasha's tweeted it, Nixon's tweeted it, The Mirror, The Sun, The Express, whatever. That's all I do and I just regurgitate it out of their social media post or out of their article to you. So you guys know what is currently out there. I'm not for one second pushing any agendas. I'm not for one se second making anything up. I am just putting out there what is already out there so people can sit there and watch it with a coffee, with a brew, whatever, with the lunch, with the breakfast and just get up to date on all the stuff that's out there. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's all true because Nixon's got stuff wrong in the past. Sasha's got stuff wrong in the past. Fabrizio rarely gets stuff wrong, but he does get stuff wrong in the past. Ornstein as well, not sure if he's ever got anything wrong, to be fair. He doesn't really tweet about Burnley. But still, so if something doesn't happen, don't blame me. Blame the journalist that mentioned it. I'm just picking up on stuff that's out there. Yes, sometimes it might be a source that you don't agree with. I do try and not use the bad sources, you know, like Football World 24-7 or whatever they're called and, and stuff like that. I will try and use the sources that have a certain level of respect and do tend to get things right more than they are wrong. Again, you might disagree with that with the likes of Nixon and Sasha, but that's on you. I don't. I think they get more right than they get wrong. Sometimes they get stuff wrong, admittedly, as I've just said. But if something is wrong, it is not on me. Again, it's it's on the journalist. So please, I know a lot of you, and 99.9% .9 of you watching this do appreciate it. That's fine. Um, thank you for that and thank you to watching the show has done pretty well since I've started it two and a half weeks ago it's t it's, it's pushed the, the numbers up on YouTube it, it's really really working it's pushed the subs up and I'm going to continue doing it but I just felt I had to say that because there's been a few comments on Facebook and even yesterday at the Burnley FC fixture breakfast there was a prominent name at Burnley FC going around talking to people saying, I won't mention the name, but saying, don't believe everything you see on Turfcast. Most of it is true, but some of it is wrong. Yet that's because the journalists are getting it wrong, not me. I'm just regurgitating what is out there. But thank you for saying most of it, or some of it, or whatever the official words were, is true, because that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to just put stuff out there, like I said, that hopefully is correct, and I'm not misleading people. But again, if, if it does end up being misleading, please, it's not me saying it, it's... It's other people. I've not just said, I know what, I'll make up a story about Rude Van Nistelrooy being interviewed by Alan Pace. Never done that. I've done it because Sasha said it, Fabrizio said it, and other people said it. So yeah, just thought I'd say that. But anyway, let's quickly get into the news. And I know I've just said all that, but this one has come not from a report, but from several different people that have told me this. And this, again, I've already mentioned the fixtures breakfast. Just for full transparency, I was not invited to the fixture launch breakfast. I'm not for one second saying I should have been, but I'm just giving you for full transparency. I wasn't there. I'm relying on this information being told to me from, I think, like four or five different people in the end that were at the event. They've all ended up texting me, messaging me, and, and telling me the sort of things that... The same prominent figure at Burnley FC, who again I won't name, has been round talking to all the people. I don't know if he talked on the microphone or talked to other people individually, I'm not sure. But pretty much everybody said the same thing back to me about quite a few different things. So I will be trying to put some of it in you know, the, the form that we do on the on this show, trying to make it easier for everybody to understand. But the first one was... Charlie Taylor is set to leave Burnley at the end of his current contract and join Southampton. Now, his current contract, I believe, 
again, not everything you see on Turfcast is true. It's probably just all the stuff where I go, I believe and I think this because I'm a bit of an idiot. Um, but I believe his current contract runs till June the 31st. So then, then all it's the same for every, every player, right? All the new contracts start on the 1st of July. I think I might be wrong. There might be some small print in there which says you're wrong on this. So I would expect, what date are we on now? 27th? Yeah, 27th. So the first will be what, Monday? Yes, the first will be Monday. So you, you might see some official news on that. Charlie Taylor joining Southampton on Monday, probably from the Southampton end. Um, but again, like I said, there's no tweet on your screen like the usual is at this stage. There's no report from a newspaper on this on, on, on your screen like the usual is at this stage. Backing up, again, everything that I've just said about me saying it coming from a different source and not coming from me, I can't put text messages on screen and stuff, can I? Um, so, yeah, Charlie Taylor is due to join Southampton at the end of his current contract and leave Burley. I, for one, I'm, I'm a bit... De I'm a, gutted is strong. I was going to say devastated, actually, but de devastated and gutted is strong. I would have liked to see Charlie stay. I think he's good enough for the championship. I think he's more than good enough, to be fair, for the championship. I still think he's a decent player in the Premier League, dependent on the system that you play. If you play a flat back four and have him sort of like whipping balls forward and stuff like that, he's maybe not as fast as he used to be, but he's still, in my opinion, a, a decent standard Premier League defender. And I felt like he would have been very good in the Championship if we used him correctly, which I'm not sure over the last couple of years we've used him to his strengths. He may go to Southampton and they may play a certain style. I don't know too much about the style that they play. I do think it's a little bit similar to ours, to be fair, but I'm not well, our old one on the company, should I say, uh, but I'm not so sure. So he's apparently going to go, as I've said, probably on the first or you'll hear an official announcement next week at a guess. That's just a guess. Um, but apparently it's a two-year deal with the option of an extension. I don't know if that option lies with Southampton or lies with Charlie. I don't think it ever lies with the player, does it, to be fair? Again, not everything you see on Turfcast is true. Um, so, yeah, apparently it was offered, I believe, a new deal to stay at Burnley, but he's chosen to leave. And again, people might see that as a bit of a negative towards Charlie, but... I think everybody's been in that position where they've been in a certain job role for because that's all this is to these lads, right? It's a job. They've been in a certain job role for a while and they just need a change of scenery. Maybe he feels like he's in his comfort zone and he just wanted a change of scenery. And again, obviously, Southampton, Premier League, that's obviously going to be a pull as well. Probably more money, again, because they're in the Premier League. Because I believe, and again, this came from the fixture launch yesterday, that a lot of the players had something in the contracts, as is standard, to be fair, about a relegation clause where if they got relegated, a lot of their wages dropped to a certain... I don't know. I'm not going to stick a number out there. Might be 30%, might be 50%. I don't know. But I know a lot of people, players, sorry, maybe staff as well, had it in their contracts. So, yeah. That came out yesterday from a very prominent figure at Burnley Football Club. I won't mention his or her name, just in case other people at the club aren't aware of it. But it's it's good to see that they are, I believe, watching these videos. If if you know they're saying if they're mentioning me, well not my name specifically, but Turfcast at these launches and stuff to people, then that, that's a good sign, right? It means they're watching these videos. But not everything I've just said is apparently true. But yeah, if it's not, then that came from you. But um yeah, Charlie Taylor, just to conclude, leaving Burnley. Was offered a new deal, chose to reject it, gone to Southampton in the Premier League and we'll probably get an official announcement on that, I would presume, next week. Elsewhere, obviously Burnley are still looking for a manager and the latest reports are that Ruud van Nistelrooy, obviously as I spoke about, not yesterday, I think it was the day before, is set to join Manchester United as part of Eric Ten Hag's coaching staff. Now, there was a report yesterday in the Mirror that ended up getting um, sort of like incorrectly fed back to people via social media. And I'll be honest, I apologise, I was probably part of that. I was at work yesterday and I saw a tweet from another Burnley fan page. I'm not going to mention the name because I don't want it to look like I'm criticising him because I'm not, I do it all the time, saying that um, Bellamy and Park, Burnley were set to choose between Craig Bellamy and Scott Parker and, it, and they said that the source was a mirror. Now, I saw that on Twitter, like I said, I was working. When I see another page do something like that, I just think... Fair enough, I'll let them have the, the Twitter thing. They've done it on Twitter. I'll just regurgitate that to Instagram and Facebook. I know, because the reason why I do that is because I don't want... There's like four or five of us now, right? And you and about three or four of them do the news stuff. And I just didn't want it on 
Twitter like 15 times from 15 different places because I know myself, I get fed up when I'm scrolling and I see my post, another post, from another page, another post, from another post, and I just think, you're all saying the same thing. So if I sometimes am second to something, I'll just think, oh, I'll just retweet theirs or add something a little bit like a vote on Twitter, which is what I did yesterday, and then I'll put it on Instagram and Facebook. Instead, I'll just use the other channels for that news. That tends to be how I do it. Other pages could do it differently. But the page said that, like I said, that Burnley was set to choose between Bellamy and Parker, and they said that that was the mirror. That's why I then took it to Instagram and Facebook and worded it in a very similar way. Turns out the article doesn't actually say that. What the article in the mirror says is Bellamy and Parker are still in Burnley contention. That's all it says. It doesn't say we are set to choose between one of them two. It just says they are in contention to become the manager. This could be in contention alongside other people. This could be just them two. It may or may well not. I guess we'll find out in, hopefully, this week. It's probably going to be next week now, isn't it? It's Thursday now. Um, but yeah, the article says, Craig Bellamy and Scott Parker are still in the running to become Burnley's new boss after Ruud van Nistelrooy opted to return to Manchester United. Burnley spoke to van Nistelrooy last week about succeeding Vincent Kompany at Turf Moor and the former Dutch striker won the Dutch Cup during his one season with his old club, PSV Eindhoven, in 22 23. Burnley are in no rush to make an appointment and Bellamy has taken charge of the return of their first 18 players for the start of pre-season training as the Clarets acting head coach. Of course, we already knew that. That's not a development. Uh, but Bellamy, who came into Burnley as company's number two in 2022, is well-liked and respected at the club and has taken their leadership role around their Gothorpe Hall training ground. It's Barnfield now, lads. Come on. They've paid a lot of money for that sponsorship. So yes, number one, apologies for regurgitating it incorrectly. I hadn't seen the article. I was at work. I rushed it. I apologise, I'll, I'll do better. Um, but it's good that it isn't just them two, because I agree with most people. I think I think them two are quite underwhelming for me. I don't particularly want any of them. I keep hearing that Bellamy is well-liked and stuff, and I believe he is by the players. Not everything you see on Turfcast is true. I apologise if that is incorrect, but I, that's just what all the reports are saying. Um, so, yeah, just to conclude from that one, the Mirror are reporting that Bellamy and Parker are still in contention to be the Burnley boss but we're not set to choose between them two. Fingers crossed, from me, in my opinion, it's somebody else. A third person might come out of the blue because Sasha, admittedly, Sasha got the stuff wrong about Rude, but Sasha did say that there is a name still on the list that hasn't come out there yet. So I guess we'll have to wait and see on that one. But yeah, Bellamy and Parker are still in contention, but we're not set to choose between just them two. Okay, that's pretty much it for today's show again. However, don't turn off just yet because there's still quite a few rumours that came from the fixture launch that I'm quickly going to go through. Again, not everything you see on Turfcast, but this has come literally from the prominent figure at Burnley Football Club that said that. So if this isn't true, then that's on him. Um, but Burnley, and I've heard this before to be fair, so I'm now backing up something that another source told me a few weeks ago, is that... Burnley are very, very, very close to bringing in a new left back. He's apparently Brazilian. I don't have a name, unfortunately, um, but I've heard that before and it was mentioned yesterday at the fixture launch, so I believe that to be true now. Also, I believe that the club are due to have another betting sponsor on the shirts. Now, some people don't like that. I'm personally not overly bothered. I would prefer it if it was the same as my little boy, but I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. The betting companies pay the most money. So we're going to take it. it I, I've, I've been transparent before. I, I, I do some work for a betting company. So I, I obviously have zero issues with betting and stuff like that. Um, but some of you do. If, if they've offered the most money, they've offered the most money. The only issue I have with it is, is that when Alan Pace came in, he said that the club will try and step away from that and they've not. So why say that in the first... That, that's the, just making a rod for your own back. That's the only criticism I have with this. Why say that in the first place? Because now you just look silly. But again... I don't have an issue with it. Just don't say that in the first place. I don't know who the betting company is. Again, no name mentioned. Um, and apparently there's a few injuries. Obviously, we all know about Ekdal. Um, apparently, he's torn his hamstring. Um, Bayer won't be back for the first game. And Al Dakil won't be fit for the first game. So we're a little bit short at the back. But obviously, we will have Esteve and Dara O'Shea if hopefully they both stay, which I think they will. Oh, actually, uh, Esteve, I did report... I say I reported it, I regurgitated a report from elsewhere about Esteve 
not being allowed to play for France in the Olympics. Apparently, from the fixture release yesterday, it was his choice. He, whether he came to the club and said he didn't want to play in it, or whether the club said, "Look, there's the, you know, we've got a few injuries. Do you mind if we say no?" And he said, "Yes, that's completely fine. I don't know." But apparently, it's not entirely true that the club turned around and said, "You cannot play, even though you really want to." Apparently, that's not the case. Apparently, it was either a mutual decision where Esteve was like, yep, fair enough, I don't really mind, or Esteve said he didn't want to play. But again, it wasn't the club being harsh on him saying, you cannot play. He apparently didn't really want to play when the club approached him. Again, not sure how that works. But um, it wasn't as harsh as it originally sounded on the original port, uh, report, Sorry, which again, didn't come from me. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Like I've said, the last bits are all just rumours and stuff. Uh, that came from the fixture release thing yesterday, as I've said. Uh, the Charlie Taylor thing I heard from several different people, which again came from the prominent figure at Burnley FC, so I do believe it to be true. It obviously it makes sense, right? We would have announced him staying by now if he was going to be staying. The contract ends literally this week. Um, so I will suspect, as I said earlier, that we'll get confirmation on that one pretty soon. But let me know again in the comments what you think below of Charlie Taylor leaving, what you think of uh, the Mirror Report about the manager and what you think about all the rumours. The Brazilian left-back, hopefully, is as good as the Brazilian right-back that we have. I know some people aren't a massive fan uh, of Vitinho, but I think he was pretty decent in the Championship last time. And when he was pushed further forward, he actually looked pretty decent in the Premier League as well. So, fingers crossed on that one. And again, yeah, just let me know what you think in the comments below. And again, I will be back tomorrow, but I'll try and do it a little later tomorrow. I'll just quickly check my diary in front of you all to see what the crack is tomorrow for me. Um, I'm off. I'm off work. So happy days. I can do it happily later on for you. So I'll do it Friday late on so I can get all the Friday stuff in because then I won't be doing one Saturday and Sunday. And then on Monday, I will cover the weekend. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below about everything that's been discussed. And if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button and I'll see you tomorrow.